frequency 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 matters 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 Hello, and welcome to the Frequency Matters podcast. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining me on the Frequency Matters podcast. Thank you. I love your name. (laughs) Thank you so much. I am a big fan of it as well. Um, My name is Kim Fendi, and um, this past year, I actually filed the LLC for Frequency Matters. So before that, it was the name of a band that I was part of with my crystal singing bowls and a friend who played the guitar in 432 Hertz. And I just was very passionate about that name. And, and now I'm doing, bringing the sounds to the world. That's wonderful. I love it. Yes. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and honor to have you on the show today. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, I'd love for you to take the opportunity to just go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm David Hulse. I'm the founder of a international company called Soma Energetics. And uh, we teach people how to be uh, practitioners, uh, as well as working actually personally too on yourself with bringing in uh, pure vibration. To me, a tuning fork is the most pure vibration that you can do. Because once we put it into music and we start having feelings and emotions that attaches to the music, we tend to go somewhere else. In other words, I hear a song I really like and it makes me think, oh, uh, back 10 years ago, I was going through a horrible breakup with somebody or I was meeting somebody and falling in love. And we kind of get into that emotional body that knocks us out. Hmm. But a tuning fork goes nowhere. When you just listen to the raw, naked vibration of a tuning fork, it just stays present. And another thing, and this may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but it does, you don't have to plug it into the grid. Hmm. And they can't, they, whoever they are, can't tap into us when we're using tuning forks rather than we're using something through the internet or on online. So it's a kind of a way to get out of the, the grid and the influences of 5D and all that rig and row and get over here and be very present with a tuning fork. So that, yeah, uh, to me, I know it sounds primitive using a tuning fork with all the technology that's available today, but I think it's an ancient, ancient way that probably goes back as far as Egypt to maybe Atlantis to who knows where that people were using uh, this idea of, of pure sound and vibration. Yeah. So uh, my background is uh, in the ministry, actually. I started as a very young man in full-time ministry, but uh, I was a I was different in the fact that I was a seeker and researcher. I didn't take anything at all for what I heard, but I had to find out for myself. So I kind of uh, educated myself out mm. <laughs> of a lot of man-made uh, type of uh, religion but I remained with my spiritual connection uh, with it. But what really changed me, Kim, was uh, in the late 80s, uh, I heard uh, a a speech by Deepak Chopra. Now, this is before he was famous. This is way back in the early days. But he said something about, uh, we have found that what we thought was empty space in the cell is not empty space, but a teeming electromagnetic field of possibility. And that changed everything for me. Hmm. Now, I didn't even get that mentally, but I got it somewhere in the cells of my body. And that's when my mind outgrew my brain, that I knew that I I was, the the mind was not in me, but I was in the mind. Mm-hmm. And the mind is everywhere. We're kind of like fish in an ocean who don't know it. And we're looking for the water while we're in the water. And a little enlightened fish comes by and says, but you're in the water. Uh And that's what Tesla tried to tell us. And some of the early, early fathers of of, of free energy and all of that, that Mm -hmm. has been so discredited, was to tell us that actually we're not empty space, but we're in a field of all possibility. Mm -hmm. So by using frequency 
and sound and vibration is how we tap into that part of the field that we have not used uh, in the sense of cultural programming, uh, education, religion, all of the things that's made us a 3D uh, human being thinker, mm -hmm. which has boundaries to it. So we're only using three to five percent of our DNA. We're only using less than ten percent of our even mental capacity. So what about all that that's left? They thought it was empty space. They thought it was junk DNA. They thought it was wasted from our evolutionary story. And now we find out it's our potential to evolve and to grow into the next level of what it means to be. Um, I I I I, I, I name this. Moving from Homo sapiens sapien to Homo luminous, our light human. Yeah. So I'm saying all that to say this is why the tuning forks has worked so well for us for 23 years, is helping people to open a code. And I think everybody's coded for for wholeness. I really do. Mm. I think we come in with something in our soul, spirit, whatever you want to call it, that is a deep code that has been cut off from outer experiences. Hmm. We call that a sacred place within, or we say, let's go in and meditate, let's get quiet. Hmm. You know, we tend to go toward the heart when we say that. So in the Bible, it's called the secret place of the most high. Hmm. So it's many different religion and texts refer to it, but they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. But it's from that place that we sp we spiritually grow. And uh, so I would say that soul energetics is more than you're broken, I'm going to fix you. But you're evolving and changing and transforming, and we're going to help you, mm. assist you. I like that. Yeah. So anytime you want to jump in. And yeah. Jump yeah. In, um... I'll just go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might I might let you because I'm very interested in, in what you have to share. Um, I have I have two kids and my son, when he was born, just he blew my mind how just why how much wisdom I could see in his eyes and how much he could understand what we were talking about without having understood language and mm -hmm. how like when he was like one not even one and a half he was he was able to put words together that were like like multiple syllables and he would he would make eye contact and nod and like like he really got it and it it just it was through that experience that it occurred to me that I'm like I think that we come in knowing this sacred secret place within and it's the world that that we live in that tries to make us forget or it's just designed that way for some reason well i love your language i think you're saying it uh, very well uh, i believe uh, what we're talking about is conscious born there's been a new portal opened up for people to incarnate through in the last uh, probably since 12 uh 2012 okay at the yeah. end of the Aztec calendar and all of you know people thought some great big thing was going to happen but it was a, sh a subtle shift hmm. that happened and it was really the beginning of of, of an awakening of consciousness yeah so uh, kim it, it just amazes me everybody thinks awakening is like awakening to paradise and awakening to everything it's wonderful but the first part of awakening is you see everything that is not in alignment mm -hmm. with creation yeah and it can be a tough time because it's a difficult time. It, it <laughs> yes. changes everything. It changes your sleep patterns. It changes your mood. And people say, "Well, what's wrong with me? I'm spiritual. I've been meditating for 20 years. I should be feeling great." But yeah. actually, what we're feeling is, uh, for a better term, the groaning of creation. Hmm. We're we're so close to getting out of the world, as you called it, but I call it the simulation. Yeah, we get out of the simulation and we get into this area we start having compassion for those that are still in the simulation mm. yeah and one of the best ways to connect with people is not to use the language we, you beautifully talked about your son understood before he learned a language because he brought in a language an ancient language of of truth and light a light language mm. yeah yeah 
And it's wild to think that he, I, I was pregnant with him in 2012. He was born in 2013. So that totally aligns yes. with what you're saying. Now, it wasn't really until 2015 when my daughter came through that I was really tuning into the frequency of unconditional love. Yes. Which, okay. which I feel like that's, that's the highest truth. And these, these tuning forks have really helped me to align with that. So super excited, like I said, to have you and have this conversation with you. Absolutely. Um, curious where you, where you take that, but I have more, I have many questions. So well, let's just flow naturally. This far away. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So I, um, let me tell you one thing that was important to me. And uh, it's funny how the universe seeds us early when we don't even know the seed has been planted until it comes forth in us. But as a, a young man, I was raised around a time in which my family were dragging us around to all these healing campaigns. Hmm. I'm from Tulsa. So that was like Old Roberts, the healer and all those big healing people. And I could figure out why. And I witnessed some people getting healed and others not getting healed. And I thought, well, you know, my concept of the old man, God out there who mm -hmm. loves and treats us all alike. I'm going, uh-uh, no, you're not. So, but it planted a seed in me. Why did some people heal and others no? Hmm. So I carried that seed for a long time on my, on my path. Then in the uh, early nineties, I got into, I guess what you call metaphysics or new thought or, you know, that type of teaching. And it wasn't so much about these healing campaigns, but it was about manifesting. Mm -hmm. Everybody was trying to use the, the, the secret. Everybody was trying to uh, manifest prosperity or uh, a good twin flame partner or uh, whatever. And I saw some again manifest, some didn't manifest. Mm -hmm. so I really couldn't figure it out. But as I began to dabble into a little bit of quantum physics and started understanding the deeper subtle world than the world of my five senses, I begin to see something completely different is that human beings story to this point is the story as a survival species. Hmm. We've survived so many things, but Kim, I think there is something and probably it happened in the sixties. I don't know. That was a pretty crazy time. And I was a minister. So I wasn't out there doing the, uh, I was probably preaching against the sixties. <laughs> Actually what was happening was a release of energy that happened at that time and people begin to be more than who they were hmm. uh, people marginalized did not want to be on their part of town they wanted to be more they didn't want to be discriminated they wanted to be more women did not want to play the role that woman was given they wanted to be more they had a contribution to make hmm. uh, any marginalized group begin to so to speak come out of the closet Mm -hmm. uh, in revolutions and whatever the thing is we didn't have a model then to teach us what was going on so uh, we didn't quite follow that but what i'm saying to you is that once we begin to understand like i was saying that we have this access to unlimited energy mm -hmm. now this to me is where we need to be careful and how we define this idea of god you know i know a lot of us have changed god to universe or source or whatever which is much better to to give it into a language my definition that i got was that this thing called the true god creator is a non-definable non-local consciousness interacting with itself hmm. i'm gonna say it again it's non-local because how are you going to localize something that has no beginning and end Right, so omnipresent. It's omnipresent everywhere. Infinite. So how can you say, how can you put it in a word or a construct? You mm -hmm. can't do it. Mm -hmm. and it is undefinable because I don't really know how to define it with limited concepts of language or word. Mm -hmm. There's a mechanism in me that says, because I am, it is. So I'm the proof of it. You're the proof of it. We mm -hmm. are the proof that it exists. Because it finally used frequency to lower itself out of multi-infinite universes to galactic, to solar, to planetary. 
And finally, it changes the frequency that can be held on a planet. Hmm. And that's when consciousness happened to me 2,000 years ago, in my opinion, that we begin to understand this thing of incarnation. Hmm. Not reincarnation at this point, but just incarnation. Hmm. That the divine has made it into the human story. And that now we're ready to change that story to the story of creation rather than how the world has formed us in their <laughs> likeness and image. Is that Amen. too much? No, Perfect. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I, I saved it a, a meme today that, that really struck me that's very similar to what you're saying, that we are many faces of the one who is all that is. There you go. And it just like, that really resonates. And I've been really trying to define god for a very long time as well in my journey because it didn't make sense to me that we you know get we as humans give him these characteristics that humans have that we think he's some man in the clouds and and i'm still open-minded because you know i don't have all the answers but no. it's it's just definitely fueled my journey and understanding and there was a time that i believed that uh, really faith was a frequency all on its own and right. that as long as you have faith in something higher power that that's the key to manifestation so yeah. i've been i've been through all these deep thoughts many many times over in my philosophy and my spirituality and my my uh my path has, has really changed and opened a lot because of the solfeggio frequencies I do believe. And the, I, I remember I took a, a course through a, a trainer from Soma Energetics when I received my first, my set of the Solfeggio frequency tuning forks okay. and learned that the, that the purpose of the Solfeggio frequencies was to, um, that they were used by the Gregorian monks to meet their maker. And I can't say that that is any more true I can't, I can say that that is very true, that not that I have met my maker, but it has definitely catalyzed my, my journey and uh, alignment with that truth and that creator. Well, let's talk about solfeggio frequencies a little bit for those that might not. Uh, yeah. And you know, know what, before we do, can I ask you one question? Sure can. Um, tuning forks. So you mentioned that tuning forks is the most pure frequency vibration how did you first get into tuning forks yeah love the question thank you good question well uh i was before i actually discovered uh tuning forks and and this work what i did before that was called dna activation okay. meditation and uh i've been always fascinated with dna and i'll tell you why because I don't care how positive thinker you are, or whatever, you'll come back to your blueprint. That's why people have to work so hard to, to, to stay positive and to stay happy. I mean, if you don't work at it, you're going to go right back to your blueprint, which is your DNA blueprint. Hey. So I thought, I don't think we're going to change much unless we change the DNA. Hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, thank goodness for uh, Bruce Lipton's work. That has proved that DNA is not written in stone, but I was teaching that in the 80s, and I found out there was a, uh, a doctor who was teaching this activation workshop uh, in, from California, and I went and took that. So what I'm telling you, I was uh, from that, I was doing DNA activation workshops, but they had given us this special sounds that had been done by uh intuitives and and psychics and people who had watched different things like reiki tuning forks and had developed these sounds uh based upon these modalities so that's what i did but one of the things in the solfeggio as you know that's most known is the the uh the uh me tuner the 528 mm -hmm. that's pretty well known out there all over the world today there's a movement toward that and it's the love frequency, and it has a lot of things. But also, it said, according to the book I was reading at that time about Sofejo, that biochemists were using to repair DNA. Mm -hmm. And I I've got to have that. That would be <laughs> perfect in my DNA workshop if I had a sound to help repair DNA. It sounded simple at that time. 
Hmm. So the thing is, is if, if you uh, know music at all or anybody out there, they would know that 528 sounds very much like a C on a piano above a C. But it's not that frequency because the brain generalizes things closer to what we already know. It makes it uh, sound like something that it isn't. Okay. So, you know, my brain said, oh, well, 512, 528, come on, you're in the fives. And that's when, Kim, I started getting the downloads because the download was, no, in frequency work, you have to be specific. You have to meet the bullseye. Hmm. You can't be off. So I thought I've got to have a C above a C that's a 528 and there's nothing in Western instruments or music. Yeah that can be found because as you've mentioned 432 we've changed everything you know mm -hmm. all that's been totally changed to keep us out of tune uh so yeah. definitely we need tuning yeah so uh anyway um someone said to me it was so odd you know as a student's ready the teacher peers and somebody out of the blue i hadn't heard from in years called me and said i don't know why i'm calling you but i am calling you to tell you did you know that you can have any frequency made in a tuning fork? Huh. <laughs> uh, well, well, that's interesting. He said, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just delivering the message here. Huh. I thought, tuning forks. Now, the only thing I knew about a tuning fork is we had a piano at home, and a guy would come out every year with a little tuning fork and tune our piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had learned that actually um, highway patrols use it to catch the speeders is a little tuning fork in their in their uh, their, their instrument that they use. Yeah, to do that. Huh. And that's all I knew. But uh, at the time that I found out about the five twenty eight is when I also came into the other five frequencies of the original solfeggio. Okay. Now I want to stress to people because people look up solfeggio and you're going to get the old do re mi fa so la ti do. I'm talking about original solfeggio. Okay. That's what's different. And that's what was being used by the, the church and the Gregorian chants, uh, according to the hymn of St. John the Baptist, was the original six frequencies. And uh, so, uh, you know, that was all lost around the, when we went into the darker ages, around 1050, 11th century. And then they've been rediscovered a time or two. But finally, in 1974, they were rediscovered uh, by a spiritual uh, researcher and doctor uh, who's no longer with us, but he's the one that had the experience that said it was time for the world to have again the solfeggio fork, that they're going to be a great help in getting you through the time of breakdown before breakthrough happens. Wow. Wow. Yeah, goosebumps. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> And that's what we're in. We're in chaos. Mm, yes. But it's not the bad chaos. It's the good one. It's the one the war, the caterpillar goes through. Mm. That's the one we're going through. We're going through. We're, just think of this little caterpillar. It's on its leaf, eating its resources behind it. Mm. Thing, until it runs out of its resources. It has nothing on the <laughs> leaf. Where do I go from here? And that's what I think people are saying. Where do we go from here? But it's at that moment that that code to become the next thing was activated hmm. in the caterpillar. At that moment, the caterpillar dissolves into chaos, into a mush, into a molecular goo that out of it comes what, and this is a scientific term called imaginary cells. Hmm. That's what they call it. Wow. Imaginary cells. And from that, it begins to imagine itself as other than the caterpillar, and it begins to therefore change its blueprint or DNA, and the molecules out of that begin to repattern themselves into a new blueprint that produces the butterfly. Well, that word is interesting, and I don't get all Bible on you, but I, get, I do want to give you share something. It says we shall not all sleep. That's good to know. We're not going to all stay in a stupor. <laughs> and mind control on, on the, in the simulation, but some are going to awake out of it. But it says they're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Hmm. Now, two things in that's interesting to me. The word change there is the Greek word metamorpho. 
Hmm. So we shall not all sleep, but some shall be metamorphosed. In a moment, the word moment is from the Greek word atomos, that we get the word atom. Hmm. So this transformation is not just an inward spiritual mystical thing, but it's all the way to the cellular level. The body itself is going to start reading a new and different blueprint. Wow. And that's what Soma Energetics teaches, as you know, in phase one, is we teach people how to work in the etheric blueprint that is before the physical body. Hmm. Everybody, almost, almost everybody believes the body has an aura. We teach the aura has a body <laughs> because we see matter before energy, but I want to see energy before matter. So if you do that, you start seeing how the subtle bodies begin to come toward coalescing to drive cellular development of the physical body. For instance, out of the crown chakra, we call it, spins the subtle energy body called the catheric. Now, that kind of connects you to Kabbalah's Keter on the Tree of Life and all that, but it means crown. Okay. Even Christians used to sing an old song, we shall wear a crown, <laughs> you know, when we get to heaven. Yeah. Uh, it's talking about this, this crown position, this crown place uh, with, with, within us. That's called the Catheric. But in that Catheric, we hold the perfect blueprint of our perfect creation. Now, that wants to get down where I live, right? Yeah. I want that wholeness I already am because I'm not broken. I'm not in lack. I have everything that I ever will be, could be, is already in my higher spiritual self, we'll call it, or higher yeah. energy self. Absolutely. But for that to move down, this is where it uses frequency, like a spectrum for color. So as it becomes more dense and gets into the astral, mental, emotional, it starts dealing with some of our karmic debt issues, hmm. things we've not balanced, things that where we went through grief or hurt or abuse or whatever that is stuck there, disrupts that flow and reinterprets it as inferior to the original blueprint. Hmm. Oh, so wow. if it gets to the etheric blueprint, it's inferior, an inferior story than the true story of my creation, which says I am whole, I am perfect, I am that that my creator is, I am. Hmm. I am, I love that one, I am that what I am. And so uh, the mental, emotional, astral, all of that coalesce into the etheric blueprint. Now what's interesting here is what our belief systems are drives cellular development. Now, while we're talking right now, millions of cells will destroy themselves and remake themselves. People don't realize that. You get a new liver every six weeks. You have a whole new body every seven years. Everything is constantly. And see, that's the illusion, is that I see a solid, uh, I look like I've been on the planet for over 70-some years, but actually every every seven years, I've had a new body. So I've had about nine bodies in this lifetime. I love that. Yeah, but but the body keeps reading a blueprint that needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. It's reading a blueprint that believes in aging and deterioration and sickness and disease and illness. So what we try to do with the power of these sulfagio frequencies is to work in the etheric body and see what we might find that is mispatterning itself. Now, here's what we know, and this is really cool, that most, most, not all, but most diseases and illnesses are in the etheric blueprint six to nine months before they become physical. Wow. And, yeah, and this is the hardest thing that Soma has had to so, so sell people to believe and understand don't wait till the doctor diagnoses you but go get a tuning with somebody who is energetically intuitive and trained to pick up mispatternings in the etheric body which is cause and if you change the cause you will change the the cellular development of the effect of the body now some people come and they've already got physical stuff 
Hmm. So then we have sulfagio body tuners. Now, the, the sulfagio energy tuners are to work in the etheric body, and we teach you. It's also how to connect you to universal energy, just like marching you down to the World Bank and having a lot of money so that when you write a check and want to manifest something, it doesn't say insufficient fund. That's why people don't heal, because they don't have the energy beyond survival to, to heal with. Hmm. That's the first thing is we got to do is connect them to universe of the energy field. And then I've been taught how to do that with the forks. And then I teach people basically how to get it over and use the chakra system to distribute it intelligently uh, throughout the third energy body so that the body now has more energy to work with to manifest because the body has the intelligence to heal itself. But sometimes it doesn't have the energy to use that intelligence because we're taking all of the energy to survive. Think how much energy it takes you just every day. Brush your teeth, take a shower, make sure you get, get a job. You got money, you got bills, you got to have a roof over your house. You got to, I mean, this is basically where energy goes. It's just survival. Then all of a sudden I need the healing. Well, I don't have the extra energy because I'm using it all in survival and recycling it. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. We get you in touch with that infinite universal energy field so you have the energy to do anything that you truly desire and manifest in your life. Hope that's, that makes some sense. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> that's powerful. It's, it's amazing, powerful, and I've witnessed it. It's, that's so it's, it's true. I'm not, I'm not can't, can't say I'm all the way there yet, but you touched on a, a, a really big buzzword in my field right now which is that inferiority yes. piece and yes. I see that uh we all kind of carry these these stories and I like to call them old tapes ah. that that we play over and over in our minds and usually I, I do believe they're formed in our childhood and then that is the 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 lens in which we see the world Yes. And I believe that um, when we start playing with these frequencies, setting an intention to uh, begin unraveling the mind, these these stories, these old tapes start to surface. And we can choose. We realize that there's a choice. I can allow this old tape to bring me down as it always has before. Or I can rewrite or reprogram this. Love it. And it's been so, it's been a really powerful experience for me. Yes, yes. I do think there is a planetary blueprint for being on, on the earth, you know, an, an earthling. And and I think sometimes that that uh, is uh, something that has driving the story of the planet that needs to be changed in some way. I don't think people, uh, I'll tell you, Kim, I'm, uh, of the years I've done this, I'm not sure people truly understand the why, why they're here. I've I, been asking that question my whole life. Absolutely. And I think it is a universal question everybody has, whether they voice it or not. But I think people lack a sense of understanding who they are Mm -hmm. why they are here and what is it that I'm supposed to be doing. 100%. That is, feel this yearning, I call it divine yearning in us, but there is a yearning in people. And of course, it's that yearning, if we don't understand it, that the ego jumps in and we feel with all kinds of things outside of ourselves, you know, that having enough money will make me happy, be in the right body, have the right, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. that goes like that, that's the ego's world uh, because it jumps in where there is a blind spot in our consciousness of not knowing who we are. So the greatest thing that a person can really experience, I don't, you know, I'm convinced that people can't just learn who they are, they have to experience who they are. Hmm. There's a that difference. That makes sense. Yeah, because that's the trouble with most spirituality in the form of religion, is religion is just outside handed down knowledge and information that is believed by the people and passed down without an experience of it. Mm -hmm. So if you take Yeshua, one we call Jesus, or Buddha, or any of the great teachers of the past, um, you will see that they all had an experience. 
now they have followers who believe in their experience without the experience. Hmm. So there's nothing more powerful than in, in 1987. Uh, I certainly didn't know much about this metaphysical realm or anything. I was just searching. But I heard somehow that there was going to be something called a harmonic convergence mm-hmm. in uh, August of 1987. I don't know what that meant, but it said people all over the world was going to gather for peace and, you know, join together. And something said you need to be a part of that. So I made my staff get up like 530 in the morning was our time to do this. And we all got up and held hands. I didn't know, but everything changed. Everything changed for me from that that time. Hmm. And uh, I began to change everything about my belief system. I began to correct a lot of my beliefs mm-hmm. because they didn't have their source in me. They had my, my source outside of me. Mm-hmm. And so um, everybody needs an experience is what I'm saying. Of yeah. course. Well, I, th- I think that it, it brings us back to the topic of awakening because like you said, uh, it's, um, it doesn't all come in at once. It's almost like everything comes crashing down at once. <laughs> and there's a lot of fear in that, like, the whole world that I thought I knew is not what I thought it is. And I, th- I think a lot of people get to that point and they're like, nope, like, put the blinders back on. <laughs> yes, you're exactly right. I don't want to know. <laughs> We and tend to always fall back on what's familiar. Even if we don't like what's familiar, it's still familiar. Mm-hmm. But to get people to, to, to step out into the unchartered part of themselves, the mystery of themselves, mm-hmm. you know, it's, 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 it's scary. But what's frightened is not the real person, the ego. Yeah. The ego that, make, that we interpret as our fear. Oh, because yeah. Here's the truth that will make us free from our ego domination. Yeah, and I think the ego knows that in some way. It knows that because we have taught it that. It knows nothing of itself. It's absolutely not even real. But it's real with our power. It's real with our own in enlightenment. It, 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 it's real because of our beliefs that are not in align with our truths. And it takes those beliefs and starts building a mindset on it until we think wrong, we think inferior, we think out of alignment and don't understand that with our power that we can create through what we think. Yeah. Yeah, so people need a total retraining. Uh, when I when I moved out of my more just fundamental, literal, biblical lifetime uh i didn't know where to go with it and that's when i was going to denver and speaking every month and there was somebody there just starting out named marianne williamson and people started feeding me these little cassette tapes of her speeches and i became a student of a course in miracles now why a course in miracles was important to me because it had my religious language but it, it was using the language of my religion to correct itself. Hmm. So I learned differently what sin was, Jesus was, Holy Spirit was. All these terms that I downloaded from my religion now was uh, an ability to correct it in hmm. a different way. One example is the Bible says that uh, vengeance is mine, saith God. So now we think God is vindictive. But the course corrects that and says, no, it's us that does vengeance on each other. Give it to God or the light and it will dispel it. Wow, I see. Whoa, that's a shift in perception. <laughs> that is for sure. And it was one after another, after another, after another, like, whoa, this, this is what I've been told is not what I'm searching for in myself. So uh, that was a a great bridge, uh, basically, for me Mm -hmm. in that sense. 
but I've always been fascinated uh, with uh, with sound. Uh, I had a experience as a young man. My pastor was my aunt. Huh? Now, wasn't that significant to have a fundamentalist woman pastor in the 50s was almost unheard of. That she was that strong and that powerful. But she had a great influence on me. But every Saturday night, she would take me to this little African-American church down in a basement that would, did a radio broadcast. And they loved for her to come and sing because she had that kind of bluesy sound. But she would take me with her. And I would sit there and listen to songs I knew at my church. They would do, but it was a different sound. They were using keys and chords that we were not using. Hmm. And I I think, looking back, that planted a seed in my mind of how powerful sound actually is and how you use sound. Hmm. So uh, I'm just saying that to say this is not something that just happened out of the blue, but I think my entire lifetime prepared me for that moment that the download started, which became Soma Energetics. Sure. And, uh, okay, so a couple more questions. Um, what is the word Soma? Can you talk about that? I'd uh, love to. Uh, I, I, I think that we've had a paradigm shift from the body, mind, spirit model. Now, I'll make it clear. That's a good model. Still use it because we're still partly in a 3D world. So we, we understand things in threes like that. Body, mind, spirit, ice, water, steam, uh, father, son, holy ghost. You know, I go on and on. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that once we came out and finally understood the quote, everything is energy, not everything has energy, changed it for me. Hmm. So up until that time, what is popular still is, is what I call the within message. It's all within. Let's go within. The kingdom of God is within. Mm -hmm. the, the, the divine is within. Everything is within. Well, that's better than without. No doubt about it. It was a big shift to go from what's outside of us to find what's inside of us. Mm -hmm. But the body has kind of got a bad rap. Even in A Course in Miracles, I can't agree with there that I'm not my body. If everything is energy, then how can I separate anything from being anything that, I, that, I, that I'm not? I am everything. I am energy. And here's the quote that got me. We think Einstein, but it could have been Max Planck, but it's one of the early, early quantum fathers says, about matter, you have all been wrong. There is no matter. There's only energy vibrating at such a dense, slow frequency that it's perceptible to the five senses. Hmm. You want me to do that again? Yeah, yeah, can you? A good one. About matter, this is why the Eastern people call this Maya or illusion. There really is no matter. There is energy. And the energy that I see, like a, your body, or I see as any material world, is only energy that's vibrating so slow that my five senses can pick it up as solid. Mm -hmm. So everything that I'm seeing that is solid is not the truth of itself. It is my perception of it slowed down. Okay. Imagine, imagine a ballet dancer or, or somebody doing dancing. And you're at this place and they're doing dancing. And you take out your phone and you take a picture. And now the picture is like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. But actually, it's movement that's going on. And that's what we do with the brain. The human brain is still so slow that all it does is take pictures of the movement of electrons, protons, and neutrons, and cells changing. it. And, and uh, I mean, you can even find pictures on uh, on the Internet that shows what we'd really look like if we could see ourselves differently than the way the brain, because actually I don't see you right now where I see you is in the cornea of my eye. My eye is filtering back you. And, and I've proved all this stuff scientifically when I talk, I'm not just talking through my hat, but if you really study it and find out there is no, nothing solid out here. It's only solid in my head. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, 
for that reason, I thought the body should be included as an energy system just as much as any other level. So the word for body that is the most used in the New Testament is soma. Huh. So that's why I named it soma energetics. Okay. To include all everything that we are is energy. Right? Mm -hmm. So same thing with water, steam, and ice. We have three different forms, but they're all six-sided water molecules made out of the same thing. Hmm. So uh Ice can't say to, to uh, water, I'm something different from you. I'm just the same thing you are in a different temperature or frequency. Mm -hmm. So that's why some energetics came, came about, to include the body as its own energy system. Okay, cool. And then another question I have for you is, um, you said that the Solfeggio frequencies were rediscovered in, I think, 1974. Mm -hmm. um, how, do you know, do you know how they were rediscovered? Yes, it's quite a story. Now, of course, these are just stories I've read. Uh, uh, I, I did, uh, his name is Dr. Puglio, uh, and I did talk to him. He's made his transition, but I was able to talk to him back years ago when I started this, just to confirm some things. But he was a, a spiritual researching minister, something up in uh, Sandpoint, Idaho, who started having a mystical experience. And, and the mystical experience started with seeing a series of three numbers written on his windshield on a rainy, foggy type night when you see things. And he thought he was losing his mind about these numbers that were being showing up on his windshield. And so he he just didn't know what was going on. Make a long story short, through prayer and meditation and tuning in and being willing, he started getting these experiences and downloads uh, from what he called Yeshua, that we all see our deity as basically the filter what we believe it to be, Yeshua Jesus. And it said to him, it's time to return frequencies back to the, the world because they're going to need them hmm. for this time of such transition. Hmm. And um, he had no idea what that meant. So uh, the first thing that this said to him for, was for him to study uh, Pythagorean or Pythagorean type of ways of doing numerology, of adding the three numbers up together to get a root number. Okay. So that's where the frequency started showing up. Mm -hmm. Then he started researching it, and some of the Catholic Church had a fit because these are information that is stuck in the archives uh, of some of the institutions around the world uh, that th they don't want people apparently to know. That's just sad to say that, but that's mm -hmm. the greed of humanity. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they don't want anything to empower us, you know, to empower us. So anyway, he was literally uh, uh, accused and, and went through a horrible time over this thing. Then he told, was told that if he went into the Bible, into the book of Numbers, that he would find a verse that would say something like 30 shackles of something. And if he would go every six verses it would repeat the same thing over and over. So the first one was third verse, sixth verse, nine verse, which is the first frequency of the oot fork. Okay. Then if you went to the next verse, it would say something like uh, 30 ounces of gold, six 30 ounces of gold. Again, it would repeat it, and it gave four, one, seven. Okay the ray frequency. So all of them were there coded because you got to understand uh, people in the, in the more elect aspect was taught to read the Bible different than the masses. Mm -hmm. The Mozart, Beethoven, all of the great musicians understood through these secret societies, how to read things different than the masses of people. So, um, Anyway, that's that's the the story that that he tells of how he then gave them to someone else who uh, wrote about them. Unfortunately, I think they took a lot of his experience into their experience. So I think some things were lost. So I'm very careful about that mm -hmm. information. But I think the information about Dr. Puglio was so right on and so pure that it certainly resonated with me mm -hmm. in that way. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, that's that's how that kind of uh, happened through him. So he was okay. kind of the vessel that it kind of came. One thing that we're promised, and I was telling my class yesterday where I teach, that one of the things you can be assured of that we have the promise that everything's been edited out from us is going to be restored back to us before the full end of the Piscean age. Hmm. Now we're in the Aquarian, but we're also in an overlap of Piscean. Hmm. We're kind of in a gap between two worlds. One's dying, one's birthing. Now that's stress. Yeah. <laughs> stressed emotionally. It's because part of you is grieving over what's dying and the other is going, yay, look what's being born. Mm -hmm. uh, all at the same time, simultaneously. Uh, so anyway. Any uh, wisdom on how long that takes for the Piscean age to end fully? Well, that's an excellent question. That's really good questions. Uh, this <laughs> is my opinion. I don't think there's a calendar date. I think it has to do with consciousness. That's kind of what I was feeling. Uh-huh. Consciousness. Mm -hmm. You see, I want to read this. I just wrote this down before, before we did this or looked at it. Many of us have returned to Earth at this time primarily to facilitate this dimensional shift. We as light workers must become the new way showers, assisting our friends, families, and clients who are ready to ascend to the next stage of their bio-conscious evolution. Truth bumps. <laughs> That's why not everybody is attracted toward some energetics and these two parts, and some are. The ones that are are the ones that are preparing to come forward and use vibration to begin to start this whole idea of the new earth, mm -hmm. which really caught on, didn't it? I mean, you think about Tolle in his book, The New Earth, and then Oprah making it world famous that everybody knew about the new earth. But you can't start a new earth until you go back to vibration. Hmm. That's the foundation. Because the foundation. in the beginning, there you was... You got it. And yeah. let me, I'm going to give you a little Bible again. It said, in the beginning, God moved across the face of the deep. And I thought, what does that mean? God moved. What does that mean? Move. So I did research and I found a, a, an old concordance and God fluttered across the face of the deep. I thought, hmm, something going on. Then I found the best one of all and God vibrated across the face of the deep. Huh. And I knew it all started with that, undes that undefinable, non-local, existing entity consciousness that I cannot divine, becoming, experiencing its own self-realization at that moment created a frequency and a vibration of itself. Hmm. That is, <laughs> that gets me thinking. Lots of things. Good. <laughs> yeah. So like before there's a vibration, was there a light and then the light caused the sound or, you know, like what, what we've been talking about this with within my neighborhood, like you see it, then you hear it that, but you know, some, what, what actually happened first? There was a movement perhaps, and then okay. you feel it. I don't know. Yeah. The first thing that I think we could call it would be light. And that's kind of what the Kabbalah teaches and, and stuff like that. That it's uh we live in a 1%, uh, universe of uh, of uh, reality and and there's 99 percent of not you know uh, uh where the light isn't there's a curtain mm -hmm. where the light has not gotten to mm -hmm. it's in us but it hasn't gotten to us out basically uh mm -hmm. wh where we live but i think that um the the vibration is the first thing the light becomes it's the vibration of itself vibrating it's like, yeah, yeah sending out the wavelengths, right? You know, the people, waves. People's always asking, what's well, before God? Well, there's a word for that called the and 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 uh and and self. That's a word I did not know, but it just merely that which is before anything you could name, it is just the the endless 
undefinable aspect of things. So, uh, but I believe that that is light. That is light. Light becoming conscious of itself produced a vibration that began to move through the the deep, and that the the deep there means to me uh, the 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 human mind, the depth, the darkness of the human, the unenlightened of the human mind, the part of the mind that has forgotten who it is, the part of the mind that the what we call the ego rules in that self, and though so. What I'm saying to you is I think for us to go back and start a new earth for the new human that we're going to have to use vibration. So this might be a good time to read Alice Bailey's quote. Um, have you heard Alice Bailey? I don't know. She's okay. back a long time ago. She's a, a pioneer. I really honor these pioneers, especially women pioneers who was doing this stuff 100 years ago or 50 years ago or 60 years ago, what they must have went through. But before she left, she left a, a prophecy. And I'd like to give this to you. It's out of my book, uh, A Fork in the Road, which uh, anybody can get online huh? interested in my story. But this is what she says. The response of the human mechanism to the world of sound will cause development that will usher in a new age. She's mm -hmm. one of the first people to coin this new age term. It will be an age in which the world will be carried forward through the medium of sound, eventually using words of power and the efforts of trained sound workers. Mm. Now, this is when it really gets good. Very short. These workers, understanding the nature of matter and comprehending the purpose of sound, will bring about those structural changes and those material transformations which will establish a civilization of a new race. Say that last part again. Okay. The purpose of sound, and these workers trained using sound, will bring forth structural changes and material transformations, which will establish a civilization of a new race. Wow. I know people think that being human is the top of the heap, but it is not. There is more to come. Yeah. So what uh, what do you think that looks like? Do you have a theory? Well, it's kind of hard to do that, but uh, <laughs> I'll give you one example that I know. The okay. blood that runs through our veins is congealed light, and you can check me out on this and, and show that when light was brought down to such a density, it is blood. Blood is congealed light. And uh, when we move into the next level of what it means to be human and change our frequency, that blood will become light running through our veins again. Wow. And we will, we will literally outray ourselves in light. Some call it the Merkaba or the light body or whatever. And that's all in the blood. Now, this is cool. Life is in the blood, it says in the Old Testament. Light, life is the light of all men, right? So it says it right there. Life in the blood is the light of all men. So uh, the, one of the stories of, 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 of Yeshua, Jesus, is that he went to a high mountain, and because of uh, his experience that he had on that mountain, it said he outrayed the light until he wore the light like a garment. So I kind of use him as a prototype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not historically in trying to prove anything about this guy, but, but the teachings that has been given to me gives me an example and sample of what the next stage of our evolution is going to look like. Yeah. I mean, he could walk through walls, not because he was, so beyond, he understood physics. He understood that things are not solid. He was a quantum man 2,000 years ago. And he's saying, when you catch up and do what I'm doing, you'll do greater things by understanding what I'm doing. Hmm. So I feel for people who don't have a, a prototype. You know, it may not be Jesus as your prototype, but find something that is 
mirroring back to you where you're going. See, and and you maybe want to be like Buddha. Maybe you want to be like an, uh, somebody else, another great spiritual teacher or whatever. Because wh why you're attracted to that teacher is because they're mirroring in you where your where your journey is going. Hmm. So we need to be kind of arch archetypal uh, beings to each other and show that when things come into our life, it's showing, oh, this is the next step for me. Hmm. So that's cool. kind of about that. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. So you have you have your book, you've written your book and you're teaching classes. Tell tell the audience yeah. more about what like what you're doing and how they can follow you learn from you etc yeah. uh i'm a, a spiritual leader of a community called heartlight spiritual center here in charlotte north carolina got a wonderful unique group of people let me tell you uh that put up with me <laughs> because i am very spontaneous and uh, like we just started classes on Gnosticism last Wednesday. So we teach every Wednesday an hour class on so many things, and all of these things are online. So if you're interested, um, also I do a Sunday morning service uh, also, but the Wednesday is the class uh, at 11 o'clock, but it is downloaded later, so you can always catch them. And where you want to find them is called uh, Heartlight charlotte.org okay i'll make sure to oh, place that in the description of the, the video mm -hmm. heartlightcharlotte.org and you can get all kinds of my teachings and stuff on there and of course somenergetics.com there's tons of things to look at there's almost too much on there uh but it, it's grown and grown over the last 23 years but there is a lot of material a lot of videos and things that you can look at if people are more interested in understanding uh, the tuning fork part of this. Wonderful. And what is you? What would you say your focus is in your next chapter or the chapter that you're currently in? Very good, because I do feel a shift is going on uh, at my at my a, a stage of time and age. I feel like I'm ready to leave kind of my legacy of my teachings. So I'm planning to go into a spiritual school or academy of my teachings. And I'm going to have kind of three major levels for beginners uh, who are just kind of searching and ready to move on. Uh, then a, a kind of a more adolescent level of people who are still not ready to get out of the confinements of religion, but ready to grow in religion. And then you have those that have made it out of the simulation <laughs> completely. And they're really the ones who are uh, coming together as this, this great um, community called light workers. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very important that we um, put out this call. So every talk I do, and I'm going to do it right now, if you're out there and you're listening and you've not heard the call, you're hearing it today, step up and be a light worker. And when we reach critical mass, as a light worker, we will bring forth this shift into the next level of our spiritual energetic evolution. So please do that. Um, and you'll know it. You'll know it from just me saying it. It'll resonate within you. You may feel chills. You may feel a witness in your gut. You may just go, oh, my God, this is what I need to do. I need to become a part of this uh, group. Uh, you know, the hundredth monkey thing, I could go through that, but we all know about the hundredth monkey, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, they reached critical mass and it affected the entire species. Mm -hmm. So we don't need everybody to be uh, awakened right now. We just need enough to be awakened. Mm -hmm. That will eventually bring forth the others in their time. So mm -hmm. step up. Uh, th th there's something in the Bible called the 144,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of people believe that's 144,000 people, uh, maybe. But I do everything with frequency, so I went 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 4 is 9, and I said, ooh, 9's completion. Mm. So I said, what about this group of people that's a 9? And the download came, they're all the people who've completed all their incarnations in the 3D world. No more coming back in linear time. They are set and poised for ascension up, not over into another lifetime. Hmm. 
So when you say, if you're feeling the call, step up as a light worker, what does that look like or mean? Well, uh, most likely if that happens, you're going to be drawn or something's going to come into your life to help you in some way learn energy work. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, Reiki's good a good way to come in. Of course, we think tuning forks is the best way to come in. Uh, crystal bowls. I mean, there's something that's going to draw you to use sound, vibration, and frequency. That is the first thing that you want to do. You want to become energy sensitive. You want to get that third eye open. You want to get the portal of the heart open because a lot of new data coming from 5D. 5G? 5D. 5D. Okay. The fifth dimension. Okay. Yeah. That's where we're heading. Yeah. Out of 5G. If, if, If we get through 4D first into 5D, so I do a lot of 5D uh, because I believe the sophagio is what curves energy to catch the spiral to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9D. Hmm. I mean, this is the whole idea of the multi-universe and multi-consciousness and all of that uh, kind of thing uh, that, that's going on. So um, w- once you get into uh, into 5D, Every everything starts changing. Everything you thought it was changes because now you're reading a, a higher blueprint of everything. Mm-hmm. So the kingdoms of this world are changed. Kingdoms meaning education, finance, medical, science. Every model is changing right now and breaking down because the 5D information is coming in. But you see, you don't want to give it to your ego. So what I've been shown, real quickly, if I can share this with you, mm-hmm. is open the heart portal. The in, the information shoots straight up into the middle of the brain to the pineal gland. The pineal gland receives it in its pure form, changes it into chemical, and you have an epiphany or an aha moment. Okay. When you have that, oh, my God, where'd that come from? I, I've never thought of that before. That's an epiphany. Mm-hmm. That means that something from a higher dimension of information has entered into your human brain without going through the filters mm-hmm. of the five senses and being dumbed down to fit your belief system based upon past information. Like higher wisdom, higher uh, intelligence. Gnosis. Gnosis. The wisdom and knowledge is directly from creator without a filter. Mm, I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate all that you've shared. I want to respect your time and our (laughs) listeners, although I could, I think we could go on for some more time. Maybe we'll continue in the future because I'd love to do it again. We'll do it later. Yeah. I would love that. I'd love to do it. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show and sharing all your knowledge and wisdom and experience. And uh, I hope that our listeners have really gotten some great uh, insight today. Good. I'm certain they are. Thank you for creating a platform for us to have a voice and put it out. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Many blessings to you and yours and your journey journey ahead. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. This concludes the final episode of season one of the Frequency Matters podcast. Thanks for being a part of this journey. I hope you have enjoyed this series of podcast episodes. I look forward to returning with season two in the future. If you have any suggestions or ideas for guests or topics for season two or beyond, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Have a blessed and beautiful day. Frequency, 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 frequency matters. matters.